with your calculator there, right? We have shifted in to a new way of measuring angles. A new way of measuring angles. Now, I've already gone to great lengths to explain radians aren't units the way degrees are units. But for the purposes of your, your calculator, right, you are putting in different numbers and you want the same answer. So for instance, we know by now what sine of 90 degrees is. Sine of 90, of course, is, is 1. Right? Sine of 90 degrees is 1. Right? Answer the question, not the thing in your head. Okay? But, but we have just gone to say, well, if I'm now talking in radians, right? This is us, I wouldn't say sine 90 degrees, I would say sine of pi on 2. And I still want it to give me the same thing, right? The only problem is pi on 2 is not 90 degrees, right? Or 90 rather. Pi on 2 is, well, pi is 3.14-ish, so pi on 2 would be 1.57 and so on, okay? So I need to be able to tell my calculator, hey, I really mean a right angle. That's what I'm really referring to. So therefore, you go to your calculator and you go shift and on the top right hand corner you've got that node setup button. Do that and you can see, at least on my calculator, most of you are sharing this calculator. On the second row it says this. So at the moment, there's a tiny little box uh, on the top of your display which says, um, it's a box and it says D in it for degrees. You need to hit 4 and you'll see that box change into a little box that says an R in it. And now, you're in this mode and to check that you're in that mode, type in sign and um, you've got your brackets there, go shift pi divided by 2 and when you end the brackets, it should faithfully give you back 1. At least if your calculator is worth the money you pay for it. If not, I'll get you a refund. So, please pay attention to what kind of angle you're supplying into your calculator when it's relevant. Like question four and five is when it appears. And um, that way you won't get mucked up. Yes? Okay, yes? Okay, sure, sure, sure. That is a great question. It's such a great question. Let me ask all of you to pause for a minute so I can answer it because it's very, very practical. The question was about the mode your calculator is in and in an exam context, like what should you do, what happens if you forget, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, let me say two things about that. Number one. Um, we're going to talk about conversion a lot in this exercise. That's because, like I said, you need to bridge from this world over into this world. Things do behave a little bit differently. You just have to get used to that. Okay? When you see a question in the HSC, it will either be in degrees or in radians. Okay? It kind of depends on the context. Now, Jinsu was alluding to this yesterday. When we're doing geometry, like straight lines and that kind of thing, frequently we will be talking in degrees. Like if you're in a two unit exam and you have to solve like a bearings question, a tree bearings question, it will probably be in degrees. And that's because sailors don't tend to say, yes, pi on two to starboard. Like, I just don't do that, okay? So therefore, they're in degrees land, right? You won't find a compass in the world that measures in, in radians, you'll be in degrees. Um, so if you're in degrees, don't change it. Don't change the question into radians so that your calculator can deal with it. Just deal with the question in degrees and change your calculator mode. By the same token, when you are in circles, and when you're dealing with um, most tree functions, and certainly when you are dealing with calculus, you will find everything supplied to you in radians, right? So we're used to saying, oh, okay, uh, draw my graph from 0 to 360, right? 0 to 360. What we mean is 0 to 360 degrees. You'll see that increasingly written like this. Please go from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, well, that's what they mean. Go that same amount, one full period of sin x, right? If your question is in radians, though you will become quite good at converting, please do not convert. The whole point is that in a question which is dealt in radians, radians are more elegant and more easy to deal with. So don't go away from them. Don't, and please, please, don't like solve the question midway and then say, okay, I'm now gonna change from degrees into radians. Like that's, that's like the easiest way to get yourself confused. Now, all that said, I want you to go back to your calculator. Put it, into, um, put it into degrees, back into degrees. And then what I want you to do is repeat this calculation that I asked you to do. Okay? Repeat this sine pi on 2. Okay? Now when you do it, 
what you should get supplied with is a very confusing number. Uh, it's also a very small number. Why is this number so small? Yeah, right now. assuming sine 1.5 something degrees. Very good. I'm in degrees mode. And remember, pi on 2 is just a number. I was just saying before, it's 3.14 3 divided by 2. So it's, it's interpreting you as saying this. Now that's a really tiny number. It's a tiny um, angle. No one ever measures an angle that small. That's why its sign is something like 0 0.02, something like that. Uh, this is your signal to say, wait, something has gone horribly wrong. Okay, I'm in the wrong mode. Don't just look at it and think, oh, that's that's garbage, right? It's not garbage. It's um that angle right there. <laughs> there he is, 1.57 degrees. Okay. So this is how to interpret what your calculator is handing back to you. If you are using this in like a sign rule question or a um, cosine rule of finding the area of a triangle, you will find everything is like 50 times too small. Okay? There is a reason for that. Okay? So, the first thing is just, if your question is in one thing or another, change your calculator to that mode. I know some students who are, um, they're like this, they actually, and you'll, you'll have, some of you have done this already, you'll bring multiple calculators into the exam, right? and then they say, well, okay, I have a degrees calculator, and I have a radians calculator, right? You got two calculators on your desk, and you put the radians one on the right because it's uh, for right. You know? uh, now that, that's one way of doing it. To be honest, I kind of like I grew up in an age where we just we just risked it and went one calculator into the exam. So just just know to change. Like the first thing when you're going through reading time is you look at whether you're in degrees or radians, and then when you encounter the question, you switch.